sales forecast. So now, Wissam, are you ready to uh, explain? So Wissam, I'm going to put it, we, we modified it. Uh, we were ma'anaki, that's okay. So we have it, so I'm going to ask Wissam, now a number of you have done it. Uh, C'est ça? Comment tu le fais pour le... So Wissam, I'll let you come and present. So this is basically what Wissam presented to me, uh, when was it, four days ago, five days ago. Sami was here. We're both investing in his company. Okay, let's start. We suddenly want to, to introduce the company a bit, uh, and then... Uh, uh, diagnostics. Hey. Uh, good morning, everyone, again. Thank you for this nice surprise. Yeah. I will make sure next time when I present something to you, I should be ready. Uh, so, uh, as I, for the people who maybe were not at the beginning, uh, my name is Usam Abdullah, and uh, I'm actually now the Minan business manager for Cardio Diagnostics Company. So, Cardio Diagnostics is a, now, not anymore a startup, but a small to medium company who is specialized in medical technology devices, mainly for cardiology products. So it's an industry related to the medical field. And uh, now we are in the process of setting uh, uh, the business uh, model in the, in the region and launching it because we have a US experience uh, in the past uh, three, four years. So the company is established in the US and now it's the time to bring it to the uh, to the. Uh, Middle East market. So one of the first things that uh, uh, I mean I, I I thought to do, but also that uh, Constantin asked us to do, is to make a sales funnel, uh, which for me uh, was a bit uh, uh, very important uh, because this is how you will be defining your market, knowing what uh, actually is your industry, where do you stand. And for me, it was uh, a nice experience because at the middle of the year, when I have expectations and you want to give answers on the coming uh, market, and now this is the time to go and see all the countries, you need to have uh, something that frames where you are and sets how you will be acting and how you will be forecasting your things. And in a sales funnel, uh, I will present to you what, uh, what we have done uh, for credit diagnostics. So a sales funnel is something that for me, uh, and this is my opinion, that should be uh, set at the beginning of the year and in dynamic and monthly uh, checks, verified, because it's uh, something that is not uh, 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 fixed, fixed, it's something that is dynamic, but at the beginning of the year, uh, we need to have a plan, we need to have a forecast, and as Constantin said, this will be uh, uh, his way of comparing it and aligning it with the uh, costs and the, uh, the expenses that uh, the, cycle of the, the cycle of the company is very important. So uh, a sales funnel uh, for me and for cardio diagnostics, and it can be applied for uh, all industries because of the same concept, you should be defining your market and framing it. And as Constantin mentioned in his presentation, to do the market strategies you can build it on, to do your forecast you can build this uh, on your sales funnel. So usually you will be having to set the location of what you are targeting in your market. And for me it was the country. So if we are talking about the Middle East, what are the countries that you will be needing to uh, target? And whenever you add a country, you need to add it to your fund. So the first thing to do is to see where are you and where you want to target. Secondly, okay, it can be more detailed. So which city uh, you are targeting? Because each market has many cities. And for many industries, it can be a, a function of uh, success, but also a function of uh, 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 sales force uh, orientation or distributor channel management. And we need to know uh, where is the account, where is the customer. So if a customer is in a hospital, then this hospital is in a city, and this city is in a country. Same thing for the honey. If it's in France, let's say, and the Kazan, Kazan city. So which city are you targeting? Some uh, uh, southeast of France is very compagnie and the uh, compagnie is different than that. So, I mean, this is a uh, uh, This detail is very important. Uh, also, who is your customer? Uh, a customer can be uh, a B two B or B two C. You need to set it. Uh, is it a hospital? Is it a, 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 a manufacturer? Is it? I mean, uh, yeah, the customer is the one who will be using your product. So you need to know who is it. And uh, uh, and where it uh, where it's located. Uh, in my in my case, uh, so when you when you set uh, your customer, you need to 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 set two things. 
and to know two things, if this is a major customer or not. Yani this is something that you will be uh, knowing by time, yani the potential of the customer. So let's say for a hospital, and this is, I'm bringing it to my case, a major hospital, let's say, uh, let's say the example of Lebanon. We, have, we all know that we have many hospitals in Lebanon. So if you go to Google, you will have a list of 20, let's say, hospitals. But are they all major accounts? So major, would the experience that you have in your proper industry would be uh, based on budgets, uh, on the customer trend, on the uh, industry trend? Uh, is this hospital targeted by your competitors? Uh, is this where the, uh, is it the public or private tank? Major means where you have the potential. How uh, this hospital or this uh, uh, customer will be affecting you and you will be taking the most uh, advantage uh, from uh, this customer in terms of time, but also in terms of investment. So it's important to set this potential. Of course, uh, when you set it, you need also to, to target your market. And it, not, uh, you need to target at first these major ones, but you also need to see whatever is uh, uh, around in order to set a whole uh, a market uh, frame. So for this sales funnel, so uh, uh, you need to start by visiting, of course, these customers with your distributors alone, depending on your distributor channel management, uh, it's always the same. You need to go and see the customer. How? This is where it's hard uh, in some channels more than others, but you will need to have this here. Did I visit it for the first time? Yes. And some of them you will need visiting them many times. But at least you need to finalize the scope of your market frame and see who you visited and who you did not. Then comes uh, what I call, I mean, I don't know if Constantin or any of you have different uh, way of uh, defining it, is to determine the safe stage of your uh, lead. So everything starts with a lead or a prospect, I mean, uh, an idea. Uh, I want to uh, sell an uh, EBMC. So how do I sell an EBMC? How is the hospital cycle? Uh, how is the sales order coming from EBMC? And this is really, um, and from my little experience, it comes to the uh, product itself. Yani each product is different than the other. In my in my uh, case, uh, the same stage is as follows. So, let's say a customer A is uh, in an AUBMC. It is a major account. So, in order to have an order from AUBMC or to finalize uh, the sales uh, cycle, I need to have first a lead. Yani I hear that there is someone who is interested or might be interested but I didn't contact him yet, so I put it in my sales time. Then the next thing, when I go and visit this customer, we would say that we contacted the customer, we established the contact. Establishing the contact doesn't mean that you're already uh, uh, finalizing things, but it gives you the scope in terms of timeline. Then each one of the sales stages uh, have its own timeline. In our case, we have products that are new and needs to be uh, uh, tried. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a tool in cardiodiagnostic, we have a new business model uh, uh, in the region. We have comparable devices, but not the same business model at all, and we need to validate it. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, in our case, we need to go to the hospital, visit them, and let them try it. So this is where it comes to the demo phase. So between <coughs> the time we contact the customer and by the time we do the try of the device, it might take some time, but at least we have we have it in our scope and we know where we are. Then comes uh, the phase where the first establishment of, uh, of sales. You know, we, okay, they are uh, after a demo phase. Usually, you have either an interest or no interest in your product, whatever is it. So after this, you need to uh, have a proposal. A proposal is not a quotation. Uh, it's the first uh, uh, entry to uh, to give them an idea about the pricing. And this comes if you are with a distributor, different that you are uh, dealing with uh, uh, directly because the margins are different. So you need to set a, a proposal where you define your product and all the uh, specs and all the uh, information about it, and then send it to your customer. So if they are interested in the price and the, uh, in the product itself, there might be some negotiations in the, in the, in the terms. Terms can be the price itself, the way that you want to present it, the warranty, etc., etc. So after the proposal comes the terms negotiations. So if we get a verbal yes, usually we need to have an official 
document from the customer itself, which is the RFQ, the request for quotation, and then uh, the quotation where we apply for the uh, official document, and then comes the order. So, in my case, in our in, uh, in our uh, case for credit diagnostic, our product needs nine, uh, uh, and this is something I I, I, mean, I had to sense it in the two months I have been now, but I felt that this product needs. Uh, all of these stages in order to situate myself in terms of timelines. It's, it might be different for each one of you. Some of you just go to the RFQ because something is already established and you go RFQ with the uh, quotation and uh, order. So it's really different. It's not the scope. The, 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 the objective is to have something that is uh, uh, tangible. You can uh, frame it in terms of timeline and know where are you situated. So after this, you need to know what is your potential opportunity in terms of revenue. Yeah, if you go to a customer, I'm using your example, for this case. I want to have these gifts. <laughs> uh, I want, let's say, I have 20 uh, honey. Uh, so it's a verbal thing, he's interested. But so you're selling each one at $1. So the potential opportunity is $20. This is the first thing. So this is where you set your potential opportunity and at this time, uh, you might be having uh, uh, the, how, how valuable is your opportunity I think the opportunity become, uh, you need to know the price of it of course you will be having a price list but this is uh, the potential opportunity the deal probability is different yani, the deal probability is additional dollar will be coming later it's direct function of the sales stage yani, if I have $20, uh, okay, I'll take the example I have here. Here I have $100,000 and here I have $50,000. The deal probability for an order, which is at the final stage, is 100%. This I know, call it aside. What I have is what I will get. However, if I'm at the time of going to the customer and checking all these same stages for the $50,000 for the 20 that I mentioned, I'm still at a demo phase and at an early phase of the sales funnel stage. I cannot forecast or I cannot say at this time, at this level of the sales stage, that my 50,000 will be equal to 50,000 as a weighted forecast. And a weighted forecast with the deep probability or uh, by the potential opportunity. The more you go in your sales stage, the more this number will be uh, accurate or close to. So, the, your job will be to push the, the lead to a further fun, uh, funnel uh, uh, stage in order to reach this forecast. It, it, might be, it might be happening that this number will change, but everything will change accordingly and based on uh, the respected and known timeline of the sales cycle of your customer and the hospital deal or the customer deal, you will be knowing exactly how much will become again with the $20 of the honey that you want to, to sell if they don't have any budget to sell it orderly and it has to go through uh, three, four approvals which you like I can only get 10 but it's to show five she can not actually but it's our ourselves so you know it you need to we need to make sure that we know where we are, are standing at which uh, at which stage so here, what is important is very important here. So there is a potential of what Chimikin is doing business in account A, mm -hmm. and the same, which is $100,000 of honey. Okay, but that's the potential of business. But what about uh, when you qualify the real requirement, and that turns into more than, because when you're prospecting, yes, there is a potential of business there, $100,000. When you move into step two, three, four, and you qualify the requirement, you know that it's not $100,000, it's $50,000 with a probability of 50 and 70%. So uh, uh, the margin of errors in, or the uh, margin of uh, uh, fake, not, not fake numbers, uh, misleading numbers in your funnels will decrease if you follow such strategies. Is this the same thing you're following or what? Like you got my answer. You know, I did, uh, You mean how do we and it get to a real number one? No, you visited the customer okay. and you say there is a hundred thousand dollar opportunity of business in this account, but you still didn't qualify the real opportunity. Then you move into your sales stages and qualify that there is a requirement only for fifty thousand dollars. Okay. 
You change it. Your hundred thousand dollar here is it my hundred thousand dollar or my fifty thousand dollar? No, uh, the, uh, the potential is the same. What you are saying is you have changed the opportunity itself. Exactly. But this will not impact on enter the opportunity at the beginning. If بعد وقت الآيات إنه مش مية خمسين, it's still a potential opportunity. When the أصلاً ما حركت هون. يعني but this is very dynamic by the way. But uh, you need to set. Uh, 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 your pipeline will be inflated with numbers that yeah. really doesn't reflect يعني, what you can close it. And this is our challenge as sales manager. They fire back on us because it's our neck when we show these numbers. Exactly. Exactly. And they're going to hunt us and say, oh, you said this is a $200,000 account. Now it's a $20,000 account. Alan, to, to answer your you question, know, how to balance this sales funnel, Alan, usually with it's very uh, di it's usually to be stable. Heather, she stabilizes me. It's, it's dynamic whenever the business or the is not known and uh, uh, we're starting it. Yani, if you start with something new, the products are new, this will be a lot of changes. But when I set up the business, these customers or the potential opportunity, you know every year they will come to you from them. It will be easier. I agree with you. This is why you need to set up quarterly, monthly, and inform and communicate uh, uh, why these are changing. The purpose of this is not to, uh, يعني, we need to take the responsibility and we need to fire back, but you need to know and this is something dynamic, and if it's dynamic, why it's dynamic? This is, without this, you don't know, uh, you can't give answers, you can't set timelines, you can't frame your market. Uh, every new business is dynamic. I'm not for me, I'm saying what I'm saying. But after two visits, I say to her, when I'm not going to go to the next But I know why the reason is, and what should be doing next? What should be done next? So don't take it as, and in the Sydney one in November, you do the plan uh, for next year in terms of forecasting. When you put the plan, the variance then the forecast to say, but you're not at this stage for the companies that are starting. Now you are settling things. And if you don't have something settled, or at least be halik hasik or chufkif yeah, yeah, Wissam, I'm going to interrupt because we're running short of time. Yeah. I'm going to, but thank you, thank you. Yeah, it seems to. No, but I'll, 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 I'll go quickly. I think all these questions are valid questions. Uh, Wissam, thank you. I'll, 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 I'll okay. close it on, on this. I'll, uh, no, 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 thank you. It's, okay. uh, so we, uh, uh, look, Wissam has doing this. We initially, when Joanna was here, uh, Wissam was not here, and I was telling him, I mean, was, I said, I, I don't want. I want to have something in writing. Isha Wissam, he said, a great idea. He came up with this. Now you will decide whether it's seven stages, four stages, five, you decide on the probabilities. What you do is you link the potential opportunity that will change. It will change as you get closer to it, what it will be. At the end, what am I interested as an investor? What is Sammy is looking? I want to see the total funnel. If out of his 50 accounts or 60 accounts, he's only approaching 10, why? What out of the other accounts? When are you going to close the other account? So we have a way to be able to discuss with Wissam and to see what, uh, uh, what we could do. Most importantly, it's Wissam's ability to be able to come to the board. Yeah, I have these hospitals, but them Saatkon, board members, in order to be able. So he could use this in order to be able to get uh, traction from the people who could help him do it. So we would look at his potential opportunities. We'd look at the deal probability, which is linked here, which is makes sense. You could discuss, is it 10, 20? Hadi mishi mhimmi. Mhimmi inno hiya 10% when you start, it's going to be 100% when you close. So this is what you have. What is most important here is the action plan, Hadi. The, what are the actions that you have here? What are the things that he needs from his team, pricing or others, that needs to be implemented? This is his call of action to his manager in terms of pricing, in terms of special budget, in terms of hiring people. So these are the people he has. Most importantly, too, is who are the contacts? He has, we have the names of all the doctors he has met. We know which hospital they are. So this is a very powerful way to consolidate all the information. And ultimately, what is it? Once you have this, once you have the timing when the deal is going to be closed and you have the probability, you basically have your funnel, your, your forecast. And this for us is critical. You know, when Sami says, he said, look, I'm going to look at the forecast and I'm going to compare his forecast to his budget. So this is what I'm going to be accountable for, not only as a sales manager, but as a CEO of the organization. So forecasting is critical because if you miss your forecasting and you have $1 million in cash, 
and you're not meeting your revenue, your one million dollar in cash is going to disappear from one day to the other. So you need, and I want to have a sense of is he on top of his number, yes or no. If every time it's lagging, and every time, he's, this is why he needs to build a buffer. He has to build a buffer. Whenever he's presenting this, he needs to make sure that he is protected so as not to come up and then every month, after month, after month, this is delayed, orders are not closed, then we lose confidence in terms of the ability of the sales manager to do. But it is, it is a way to be able to, so funnel, what did I do wrong now? Okay, any questions on the sale funnels to Wissam? Wissam, I'm sorry to interrupt you, I'm Ash in the year, and I have a few things. So th this for us is quite important. Each one of you have a different version. When we will be synchro, it's a different version. Uh, Atelier du Miel, he has his own version on it. He, do you have a funnel, uh, Eli? And that funnel list? Uh, not written. Not written. Not written like this. You have it like this. But they have, the first thing I'm talking with Mark is uh, Eli's boss, is Mark, Bidil cash flow. Bidil cash flow forecast. Farjini Kilshaher, what is going to come up? Now, for, I want to know because I need, I need to know, or what I, and I need to know whether you have a gap. Maybe you don't have enough cash from your revenue to be able to cover your expenses. I need to know how much is the gap, because if you have gaps and you don't tell me, and you find ways to fund it through debt or through others without informing me as a shareholder, I'm pissed off. You know, I'm pissed off, so I need to have visibility on your cash flow. For this, I need to have visibility on your sales forecast, and I need to have visibility on your cost, and there is no way you're going to take a funding decision without informing me as a shareholder to be able to do it. So these are all interrelated. And who is the ultimate owner? The sales manager. The sales manager, the marketing manager, is the ultimate owner of deciding how much of the cash flow forecast is going to be realized or not. So it is tricky. If you're too uh, aggressive, it's going to be, so be conservative and most importantly, be prepared to have the answers. This for me, when he presented it, even if he's not going to make it, for me, it's a good sign. At least we have a framework, at least we have a way, we will fine tune it, we'll get to know, he will, we will try to see how he could use it, but I have a way to be able. Once I have this, I have my forecast, sales for, once I have my forecast, I have my cash flow forecast. When I have my cash flow forecast, I know how much investment I need to be able to fund it. Clear? Sales funnel and sales forecast, the two are closely linked. With your funnel, you have the potential opportunity, you have the probability which is linked to where you are in your sales cycle, you have your weighted forecast, and then you have the timing. Based on this, you have this, based on this, you have the cash flow. Okay? This I have to close. Thank you, Wissam. Okay, this is this lines. Okay, look at this lines. Very good. Okay, so this is the funnel, we have covered it. Uh, from the funnel, I mean, this is a summary, we're repeating ourselves. You need to make sure that there is recognition of the unsolved problem. The need uh, is a top priority. The pain cost is clear. There is an advocate who owns the initiative. So this is basically, there is a need and there is an owner and there is money available. And basically your position, you are well positioned. So here the budget is available, the authority is there, and this budget is meant for you. So this is, it's only about the budget, it's meant for you and not meant for somebody else. And this is where you go into the sales funnel. Okay, repeating, so this is an example here of another funnel. You have clients, you have the country, you have the size of the opportunity, you have the product that you're going to offer, you have a timing, you have a probability of winning, it could be 20%, it could be 80, you have the name of the decision makers. Constantin, come in, hey, hey. And I dare now, 75%, Okay, the probability, this is the answer that here, the way we Sam has done it, when you look at your sales cycle, it's base. It's basically somebody that you have uh, only contacted, it's very low probability. When you are at the quotation phase, when you're, it's, it's, it's right. I mean, what you need to do, it's basically based on his gut feel. He knows how long it takes, but I could tell you, if you have met the customer, it's already, you've met the customer. If the customer told you that he has this need, and he told you, this is my budget, I'm already at a more advanced phase. If you tell him, look, I'm interested, I've seen your demo, I like your product, please come back, 
and uh, do the demo to others, you are advancing. If he says, now I like the demo, please make a quotation, you're advancing. If the quotation is there and the quotation, he said, look, there is two on the short list and we need to fine tune the pricing. We going to so this is the way the funnel goes. Though it goes down in terms of the numbers, but then as it goes down, the probability increases. Whether it's 70 or 80, or he does it. He did 10, to, uh, 10 20, but two sala hundreds. Okay, this is your gut feel. The more you are faced with, the more you're going to be might uh, uh, fight you. Any other question? The numbers, you can generate from the data. You can look at your phone and see how what are your conversions. And accordingly, see the percentages. You, you could. You could have historical data with the customer. If you have historical data, this is great because it gives you some validation of it. Instead so, of doing like 10% of money or showing Whatever. It could be zero. It could be, uh, you know, eight. When I was a sales rep, I did it very simple, 25, 50, 75. This is what the, because the 100, it's not even in the funnel, the 100 is closed. So it's 25, basically low, medium, and high. This is what I would do. I'll do it much less sophisticated than uh, what we Sam has done. And this is what I presented to my uh, you know, sales manager when I was a sales rep behind it. These are the deals, and based on this you have. So you, you're right, having the track record helps. Okay, what's important here is the, this is another one, and this is, is the win-loss. I want to know the project, the country, the size, the product, the reason for losing and for winning. It's like, why did we win and why did we lose? Because this is going to make recommendation for management. So my pricing, the product fit, the market awareness, all these things, you are the one who could influence the decision, the key decision in the companies in terms of the product. Is this the right product with the right feature? Is this the right pricing? Is this the right packaging that we need? Is this the right promotion that we have? So all this will come from your win-loss. So a lot, and people don't. We turn and we forget. I don't want to forget it. I want to know for each one that we have won why we lost, and I want to know for each one that we have lost why we lost. And not a lot of time is spent on this. But with Wissam and with B-Synchro and the other one that we're following, we will spend some time on it. This is another way to look at it. All these slides you will receive. So this is the cycle that you have. It depends on your, you know, sometimes you have bids, other times you don't. But these are the different phases that you go through from qualification to a proposal to a final negotiation. Uh, that you have to go through and this will give you a bit of a sense. Each one of you have different dynamics. Each one of you, it's a different sales cycle. Each one of you have different uh, elements. There is no one size that fits all that you have. I mean, if I look at Bogjashi, you say Constantin Hediktir, Sabe. And now it's very easy. The people like our things, they place the order and uh, we come in. So it's very difficult to have a funnel. And she might be right. But then I would say we need to make sure that we have enough leads and enough contact points around the world that we get these elements. So it, not, it might be a completely different uh, sales uh, funnel management that she has in place. But we need to have one. Now once you have this, what is linked with your sales funnel is basically your CRM, your client relationship management, because your database is worth a lot. So this database, how are we going to use it? What sort of activities are you going to take it so that this database could generate more leads? And this is the whole aspect of having a proper client relationship management. And you have a number of companies that today specializes in providing these tools to this. The one of the dis discussion with Bogja is we have this database. And they have a global database. They have all the big names that you could dream of around the world that are interested in it. How can we activate it? How can we make it live? What sort of uh, and to which uh, segments do we want to propose this uh, uh, proposal or package versus the other one? This um, importance and it starts also with the database. Where does it come the database? It comes from your funnel. So the funnel has a lot of information even if you've lost the deal. What is it? So think of it not only as sales funnel to look at your sales forecast, to look at your cash flow, but think of it as your gold mine that would allow you to come up and the way you segment the customers, what sort of marketing activities you will pursue. Is it an SMS campaign? Is it an email campaign? Is it face-to-face -face discussion? This also is your role with your marketing manager to be able to identify what is the right way to approach your customer and what is the most effective way of doing it. In the case of Atelier du Mier, I go back to Eli, they have a very powerful sales. Should be 
بيقول لك عندك جنينه كبيره حط لك شيء ينغش هون اما شو هون هون يعني كل واحد الرئيس مبسوط لانه هلا هي هاز هوني هي كود ميك هيز بريزنت مين بيستفيدوا اتولي دي ميل على كل شو اسمه سو هي بيكومز دي هوني اوف ذا بريزنت ذات هي اوفرز اكروس اول هيز كاستمرز ذيس از ون واي اوف ريتشينج هيز كاستمر بيس ناو هي هاز ات فور ذا بريزنسي هي هاز ات ناو اكروس ا نمبر اوف بليسز اراوند ذا وورلد ويتش اول ازا وود هاف ات اي يو بي ان كون اما ما ان كون بعد بعد Residence de Pancho, you know, you have a number of, this is one way of approaching his customers and one way to generate deals. So you have, so you have the way to be able to look at your data bases to be able to look at your So you have, so you, you have the ways to be able to look at your database to be, and then how do you best to exploit it to be able to generate new leads. Okay? All right, so Heidi Marahn's organization structure. Um, I'm go not going to go through it. You have different ways to look at the organization structure. So if I look, for instance, today, you have this is one way where you have a sales manager. Uh, this, uh, this could report to uh, CSMO is, a, uh, is the um, chief sales and marketing officer, depending on it. But you, you basically could have sales manager across areas. So these areas could be country A, country B, country C, country D. This is one way of doing it. Each one has a country. It's very clear. The sales manager is responsible. Allocate the quota. So this is a very straightforward. The advantage of it is that it's simple organization, clear authority, quick decision, low cost. So we have it. Each one is accountable. The disadvantage is that no support to these. The sales manager is left alone. The sales reps are left alone. You have another tweak to it. You could move and you could have reporting to the uh, sales and marketing manager. And some of you start having it. You might have a marketing research. So this guy or this lady does a lot of the market research, see what are the prospects, come up with customer database. You have the sales manager who needs to do the quota. The market research analyzes. These are the trends. These are the potential opportunities that we have. You have somebody that only does promotion. So this, you have the data. Let's do the promotion campaign to help these people fill their funnel. So this is to fill the funnel, this is to fill the funnel. And this is when you have the customer to have somebody, client relationship, that is here to be able to respond to customer needs. It's a bit more sophisticated. Some of your companies are already in this phase. b is in this phase, where they have a sales manager, but they also have somebody looking at market research or branding. It could be market research, branding behind it. This is promotion and this is customer. And these are continuous. So this is another way of doing it. You have more support. It's a bit more expensive, depending on the size of the, uh, uh, the deal. Uh, we have, this is the functional, in terms of functional, what we have, You have market research. You have basically the salespeople is draining attention across market research, promotional, customer services that are all here to support him or her to make sure that this I'm going to be. This is more of a flat organization. What you will have, you will have these are different. It's less hierarchic. You have the research team. You have a customer support team. You have a customer satisfaction team. You have the operation team in here. And then you have planning in terms of strategic planning, HR, and others. And this is the way they network. It's not a direct hierarchical. It's much more of a circle. B-Synchro is implementing a similar sort of model in their organization structure. Um, geographic, similar process. Uh, I'm not going to spend time. I'm sorry? By product, you could have it by product, absolutely. This is the other way you do it. As you come up here, you have the market specialization if you want to have it, or you could have it a combination of it, when you could have regional sales, and you could have it also by product. Okay, so this is now, uh, why I'm covering this? I'm covering this, typically, if you look at the pillars in any startups, you have four pillars, four. You don't have five, you don't have 10, you have four. What are the four pillars in terms of functions? What are the four pillars? Yeah, one is operations. So it's operations. Definitely you're going to have sales. You're going to have technology. So technology is there. Who else do you have? You have all the finance and all the admin that is here. So these are the ports you could have support. So these will be the four pillars that you have. Most of you typically are very strong in technology. And the weakest link is always sales and it's always finance. This is the weakest link that you have in most of the companies that we are working with. The finance is outsourced. Uh, you know, Adelaide Dumiel, I had to put pressure on him to bring it in. In uh, b -Synchro, it's the same uh, syndrome. We had even the person that I have, I'm not sure is the right person for the job. So people are used to, ex ex it's not. If you are getting shareholders on board, you cannot outsource your finance function. You need to have it on board. Sales is the other issue. You know, they have the right product. And typically, it's the CEO who is, a, but he's not meant to be a salesperson. You know, he's not, maybe focus on uh, technology and be your technology guy, get somebody to do the sale. So this is the other. Uh, the cardiodiagnostic is a good example. Joanna and, uh, and uh, Ziad were selling it. They realized it's not their expertise. 
ولا واحد منهم say bring a salesperson on board make sure that this person is accountable and being able to do it so once you have the sales it's quite important how you structure it afterwards depend either on your product depend on your channels of distribution depends on your maturity that you will have over a period of time you cannot do all by yourself you need to have the partners to outsource it and these partners could be distributors or could be joint venture partners or you could have subsidiaries in these different countries now as a sales manager you need to set up your sales organization because once before he hired we interviewed and what we asked each of the people who interviewed give me how much you think you could do in the middle east give me your organization structure what is it now what is it going to be in 3 years down the road and tell us how you going to be able to get there so what we're asking him the first thing we ask when you have a sales strategy is give me your sales structure give me the people that you need behind it give me the marketing budget that you need to have this is the exercise that we're doing with bogja as you will ton prénom Lamia. Lamia, for instance, now by it's supposed to be the end of last week or this no, week? At the end of the month. Lamia at the end of the month is going to put together her marketing plan. These are the different activities. This is the different budget that we have. This is typically the sort of leads that we could get from each one of them. It's a plan. The same thing you need and this is a structure maybe she needs she needs to outsource to a branding agency she needs to outsource the web to somebody else she's outsourcing the client relationship management to a different company these are the things that you will have in your sales plan is you need to have your organization structure you need to have a sales budget in order to be allow you to do your revenue so this is the base and i've shown you example of sales plus or minuses behind it the last one is on compensation what are the different ways to compensate sales people Okay you have salary. Okay you have salary and commission, okay? So you have commission. So first is salary. Some of them are on fixed salary. You have a number of you that are sales people, you're on fixed salary. And blbnain fiktir. Mish alil fiktir. This is the first thing is this is a mistake. There needs to be a pain point. There need to be a pain point because if I pay the same salary to the good performers or bad performers, I'm not doing my job. So the first one is yes there needs to be a commission scheme. What is the commission scheme should be based on? Performance. What is performance? Income. Okay, closing clients. So basically the number the sales revenue. What else? Uh, I could be on forecast, but I would say the most important one would be on revenue. I'm going to measure you on the forecast because if your forecast accuracy is 90, 80%, I feel good. But it's margins is important. So what I want to do is I want to have the sales but I also want to do because as sales person I want to motivate the sales person to sell me if in Bogja I have these chairs and sofas that I have a 85% margin let's say net operating profit margin at 50% and I have the other one which is just 10% I want to incentivize the sales person to sell more of the high margins. So you need to look at margins. Don't look at top line only. You need to look at top line and you need to look at the margin that you have to incent. These are two elements which are quite important. What are the other ones? Number of customers. Okay, you could do a number of customers, but there is another one which is critical, especially in Lebanon. So you have either revenue or you have margins. What is the one that is missing? Payment terms. Uh, what? Pa- not payment terms collection. and receive a collection in decorative so what we are doing now is a number of the companies are sitting on 6 months of collections or 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 9 months of collection i tell you the one thing that helps collection change so have the commission based on closing the order have also part of the commission based on collecting the money because once who knows the customer best than the sales person no one no one so what you do is you do this now you have to be careful If it's too high on collection, the person is going to spend a lot of his time on trying to collect the money and not enough on selling. So there needs to be a balance between the two. You can incentivize the, the customer to pay. You could. Price. You could. So this is a different one. So you could have this is prompt payment discount. This is another one to do it is you tell to the customer, okay, but that's the idea here. But that could fall like within 15 days and give you a 5% discount on it. Uh, this will be a prompt payment discount to encourage some customers take it other customers the customers who don't take it are the customers I'm concerned about because this is obvious uh, advantage for them to get the 5% discount if they're not taking it means that there is something maybe wrong in their cash flow so this is but to go back the first is on commission fixed salary is one way and a number of companies are doing it the second one is fixed and a bonus that you have so the fixed and the bonus is also important that we have because we get the bonus is either linked to revenue in most cases it's linked to the sales that you do it could be linked to the margins that you do a combination of the two is important it could also be linked to the collection these are the three most important elements where you look at commissioning of the sales person okay so this is how we have commissioning is important now the question becomes how much do i commission 
So how much do you think the commissioning should be? Okay, but so it depends on the business. It's, it's, okay. it's a skate. So what you do is you have different slopes. I'm going to put the slopes. You have different slopes here, and I'll show you what it is. What you have here is you have a certain way you cap it. So 70-30 versus 60-40, what it means? It means that if I have 70-30, 70% is my base. No matter what I do, I'm going to get 70% of my salary. If I do 100%, I get the additional 30%. But if I'm 70% means if I don't do the 100%, I get 70. I need also to have an incentive. If I do 130%, I will get 130%. So what you do is you have this curve, where here you are probably, let's say you are at 100% of your salary. So this is the performance. This is the performance, and this is basically your salary. Here you are at 70%. But B, I'm a bit B, you are at 70%. But last at 70% of quota, you get it at 100%, you get 100% of your salary. You exceed it to 130% or 150, it's up to you, you will get 130% of your salary. So you could be penalized. If you don't sell, you're at 70%. If you make your numbers, you're at 100%. And if you make more than your numbers, you have more. Now this curve can increase. The more you make it steeper, 60-40, means that the higher is this going to be. So if you want to do, now why do you do a 60-40, a 70-30, or an 80-20? It depends on your ability to be able to control the sales. I give you an example. If you're here, we have hunters. The hunters are people who go and hunt. They hunt for accounts. These accounts, Bijibuon, and you have people who are farmers. Hala, Karol Ma'ejetelyom. Karol is a hunter, and uh, uh, Diala is a, is a farmer. They're two very nice ladies, they work for the companies. Carol is a hunter. She goes and she hunts and she has salespeople, she get, brings in customers. Once she brings in the customer, Diala, Diala takes the accounts and you pump they, they, one of the companies that we also funded, she farms them. Farm them means she takes the account and grows the accounts. Man the hunter, he he home, client relationship, how do we do, how do we understand the needs and we help you grow. Carol with Jibon, so you have different types. Carol is on a steeper curve. Carol, she has to bring them. The more she brings, the more. The, the farmer is an easy, it might be, Carol is on a 60, uh, 40, uh, uh, Diana will be on, a, on, a, on an 80, 20. So depending on the type of job, you will have different incentive on it. Do you understand? Are you with me? So this is the, who is the decision? You, as a sales manager, need to define what is the commission scheme. Okay, you have to do it. Now, the other thing that you need to do. Question here. Yes. Uh, in an early stage startup, yes, exactly. Okay, now early stage, it depends on you. You could have it fixed. Personally, I feel that whenever you have a sales, even if it's early, most, I mean, his Wissam is early stage. Early stage. How many do you have that closed? You know, very little. If you refuse, he's early stage. He will say he's an SME, or she, no, he's a salesperson, but he had no bad choice, and no fruit, and all the alam, and all the shit, but the, the, or late in the start, and all the shit, and the boat is the only, but he's not, no, he's, but he's early stage. He's in the same stage as you. Maybe you're more advanced than he is. Yes, but he is on the commission scheme. Okay, on, on this, yes. What about commission and stock option? Okay, I'm coming. I'm Alex, I'm sure I'm I. Uh, okay, so we started with base salary. The base salary. We said we want a commission. Why is the commission? We want to incend them. How do we commission? Revenue, margins, collection. These are the most important ones. You could have others, but these are the most important ones. This is short term. And you typically you set a target. This is my target. Each one of you have a target. And then based on this target, how do you perform? On a quarterly basis, we could pay your uh, commission. Quarterly or semi-annual or annual. But mostly sales, he wants to live life. He wants to enjoy, uh, he wants to invite Joanna to a nice dinner, either one of the Joanna or both Joannas together to a nice dinner. So he wants to have Bidul Masare every quarter. He can't. And El uh, El Banet, uh, they, they, they expect the, uh, uh, the order. So for this, you need to have it on a quarterly basis. Now, this is good short term. First, you need to make sure that your salary is a salary that is aligned. What happens is that salespeople are hunted. They're hunted because you have a little available of good salespeople. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that your 100% is aligned. So how do you do this? How do you know how much you pay for a person with five years of experience versus a person with 10 years of, of experience in terms of sales? How would you go about validating? You have benchmark. So how do you do the benchmark? 
You could do industry. So for instance, what Joanna would do in the case of cardio, she will come up and she will buy the database for Bates and say this is the average salary that we have for junior, senior, uh, you know, more. This is how much they do across in Lebanon. If you want to do it in a cross country, they have it. They have all the data, you buy it, you pay a few hundred dollars and you get it. Or you get it, we as Berry Tech, we have about 50 companies that we funded. We know the salary structure of every single one, from the CEO to the uh, CFO to all the salespeople, we have the data. So we have the data, so this is a good base in order for you to be aligned with market practices. So one is make sure that your data is aligned with industry. Two, ensure that your commission scheme is related to how much of a hunting and bringing customers versus one that is here to maintain customers and to help customer grow. Three is don't think also of quota, think of the other ones. At the end, it's cash flow. I don't want him to be celebrating and it might be that the customer has defaulted and we have the commission and we have to pay for it and I put all the bad debt right off to take it from the Lisbon. So this is very important. Now you need long term. So what do we do long term? Joanna is a very young lady. She is very aggressive, very ambitious. A number of you are very ambitious behind it. So you realize that people are subject to lose. So what do they do? So you have two ways of doing it. What you do is you need to retain. So you want to retain on the long term, mishbas on the bonus. So you have the salary, you have the salary, you have the bonus linked to commission. Then what you do is you say, and more and more of companies are doing this. You know, we do and we say, fine, these are critical people in our organization. We're going to open our capital structure to be able to have them as shareholders. So we will give half a percent, we could give one percent in this case on it. If it's a CEO, for instance, in Bogja, we're looking for a CEO, we're, giving, we're willing to give much more. But this is in terms of this, what you do is you make the person being part of this organization and you have this person becomes really a shareholder. So it becomes, if the person leaves, the stock option go on it. So this is where you have on it. So this is a way for you to retain the person and to have it. So you will have, now you could have it, we call it ESOP, Employee Stock Option Program. In Lebanon, it's starting. We have uh, started doing it in, uh, in a few companies. It's not the norm, but it's something that is very important because the people becomes like you. They become shareholders, they think like shareholders, and they think the long term. The other way to do it, which is simpler, is that Joanna, but what I do is I'll write you a letter and I will say it's a virtual stock option. Is I'll tell you this is the valuation of the company. This is how much share I'm going to give you virtually, not really. So she's not an actual shareholders. But in the company in one year, two years, three years, four years and five years down the road, you will get this share. If we pay dividends, we will give you your percentage share of dividends. Have this accepted by the board. Officially, legally, she's not a shareholder. But with this piece of paper, she is a virtual stock option owner of the company, so she will get the share. So this is another way, which is a simpler way to do it, because we don't want to change the capital structure, issue new uh, uh, shareholder agreement, take a lawyer, and all these other things. This is another simpler way. Uh, no, it's not profit sharing. Profit, I mean, in some way, it's similar because she will have the equivalent of a certain percentage. So if there is prof, not only profit, dividends paid to the shareholders, then if there is, let's say, the shareholder decided that 30% uh, of the profit is going to be paid to the shareholders, she will get the equivalent of whatever is his percentage. 0.5, 1%, 2%, she will get it as dividend payment. So this will be the agreement. So for her, she feels like, and if they decide after five years they're selling the company, she has the right to cash in. The value of the company now is 100 million. I have 1% of the 100, I have 1 million dollar. They will pay her 1 million dollar. Thank you very much, we have done. So this is the way for her, it's virtual. She's not real, it's legal. So you have it, legally binding, this is a document written. So you have, um, you have a, a virtual stock option. Now we have another way of doing it, I'm giving you different sales compensation, is you do a cascading bonus. In Nunabil, Tamia Shwai, I want to make sure I keep him. So what I will do to Nabil, I'll give you. You have, uh, let's say, six months of bonus, you have done it. Now you've done it, you've met your target, uh, you have six months of bonus. I'm not paying you the six months of bonus. I'm going to pay you three months of bonus. The other three months, I'm putting it in an account. Now the following year, we'll do the same thing. But every uh, second year, I will give you half 
of what I've put the previous year, and the following year I give you half. So what is happening is I'm cascading his bonus. Every time he's making money, part of the money is staying, and the other part of the money is going in his pocket, the other part. This is also another way. So a simple way to do it, you retain your people. Because the more they perform, they get the money, but there is like, you have a, a bank account. You have a bank account and you have this, and then at the end, if he decides that he wants to leave, without, he's not entitled to it. If he decides that he stays and we actually ask him to go, he's entitled to it. So there will be, be different ways. So it's like a pot, and this pot increases as you do and as you build it up. Okay? So these are different ways to motivate your sales. So what Joanna has put here is that you need to retain your people. And salespeople are the most difficult people to retain with the software developers. Today, if you look at the two areas where there is hot demand, it's software development, project management, and it's salespeople. These are the two. Naam, Afwan? Mafireo. Mafireo. So if you have, uh, so you have, so this is what you need to do. These are the benefits behind it. So you have, okay, you have to examine the job. So this is why quite important. One of the exercises that we do, Joanna is doing it for cardio diagnostic. First thing is once you have the strategy, what is the organization structure? So tell me your organization structure. Then I want to have clear job description for each one, including your sales manager. With the job description, I want to make sure that I have clear performance indicator for each of the positions. This is, and it's her role to be able to do it, that we have. And then I want to make sure that she benchmark. For each of these job descriptions, I want to know what is the salary band. There is not one salary, there is a salary range. And she, it's her role, and she will put it together. This is the structure, these are the positions, this is the job description, these are the KPIs, these are the salary ranges. This exercise needs to be done on it. Once this is done, then we have straight salaries. This is straight, advantages, salespeople get secured income. I don't like secured income for salespeople. I don't food like uh, salespeople willing to perform non-selling activities like payment, collection, report, simple to administer. Disadvantage, no financial incentive to salespeople for more effort and better performance, maybe a burden for new or loss-making firms. So this is one. The other one is, of course, you go commission salary. So this is straight commission. This is tough. Very few people will go for it. You make it, but you have some jobs where you're on 100% salary, 100% uh, commission. And I'm not going and then you give a big portion the advantage, strong financial incentives, uh, control selling costs, and basically if you don't sell, you don't get anything. The disadvantage, focus on sales and not on customer relationship. Salespeople may pay less attention to non-selling activities. Typically what you have is a combination of the two. So you have a combination of fixed, this is here, the 70%, or the 60%, or the 80%, and the variable, and you have advantages, rewards, flexible to reward and control sales force activities, security for living costs, uh, reward specific sales performance, and different plans for different sales positions, different jobs. Normally the sales manager should be more on 80-20. The sales rep should be on 60-40. The higher up you go, the normally the less steep the curve is going to be. Because you're here more to, ma to manage your, when Wissam will have 10 salespeople, he won't be on 60-40. He will probably be on 80-20, but his salespeople will be either on 70-30 and 60-40. So the higher up you go, the less steep, because you have other managerial, which are not necessarily sales related, but ensuring that you have the right team with the right tool, with the right training. So this is your role. You still are on commission. behind it. The last one I have here, is there a last one? Okay, this is links. Uh, Joanna has put some links in terms of articles, in terms of uh, recommendation. Okay. email So Joanna, it's basically it's her presentation. Okay, so what I've done is trying to do as good of a job to what she has put together. We Sam, thank you for presenting also on it. I appreciate it. Um, on now with the companies that with, I, with whom we work, we go into much more detail. Any questions so far? Thank you. Well, uh, have a wonderful day. I know I'm going to see a number of you afterwards. Thank you.